Welcome back to number two lesson in how we can spend more time making music and less time making reads. I personally feel that we do spend way too much time, as I said in my last uh, video, uh, with bamboo. And I've spent so many hours of my life um, scraping away on cane and then finding out that that cane is a bad piece of cane or doesn't vibrate as well as I want it to or doesn't have as good a sound. And so today I'm going to uh, point out several different things. One, how we can accomplish finishing up the read that I had last week and making it have a better sound. And number two, not placing so much importance on the read itself being, make, being the essence of a really nice sound. That audibly we train our ears there's a train going by, so just ignore it. Right, here I am with this read that we were, were looking at last week as far as getting the response from the bottom end to the top end. I've done nothing to it other than just to make sure that it responds a lot better than it did initially. So we're going to now take it to the level of how do we get a better sound out of this read. First step is I'm going up chromatically once again up the scale just to make sure this read, since it's been a little bit of time, works. I have it wet, but I haven't played it yet. So here I'm going to play up and down the scale to make sure that the response is still really good. Okay, so now we have a read that is responsive. So the question that I raised last week in this particular segment is how do we make the sound better? Well, I said last week it was a little thin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus, I'm not gonna take as much as people would think out of the back of a reed. The reeds that I buy usually have quite a bit of reed, um, uh, cane scraped out of the back of the reed. I'm gonna focus more on making the rails even thinner, the tip even thinner, and in the process of that, what happens by making it is, is that the heart of the very tip will then be more pronounced, which will give me a darker sound. So I'm going to take the plaque and the knife and I'm going to come over to you and I will show you. Okay, so here I am and the read is responsive and what I'm going to do now is work on sound. That's our goal today is how can I get a better sound in this read? And I said earlier is that I'm going to go after the rails of the very, very tip and with not too sharp a knife, and with the, with, the knife, with the cane a little bit dry, if not dry completely, is that as you can see, again, we talked about the wiggling. I'm gonna move my arm over here because I want you to see my wrist action, is that that's pretty much how I'm moving. So, and basically, as I said last week, this is, I'm pushing up, and this, I'm pushing down. So basically, it's, it's creating a place in which I can basically use the weight of the knife to basically do all the work for me and I don't have to push into the cane like a lot of old players do. And that way, as I'm coming on this side and I'm basically focusing on one thing right now, and that's really going after the rails from the heart into the rails and and getting it nice and nice and nice and um, smooth from the from the heart into the into the rails of the very very tip and the very very tip which is creating right in this area where the tip is a darker spot the thinner i get the rails the darker the middle becomes and it, when that happens i get a darker sound just last week i told you that the sound was a little thin for what i was what i would want to play on so I'll do the same thing on this side and as you can see, cane's coming off, but this reed is really not that sharp. And some people were saying to me, well, how do I tell? Well, you know what, here I am, as far as taking off, you know, do, do I put it against my fingernail to see if it's digging in? No, I don't, I just, I basically just scrape, and if I see that pieces of cane are coming off, then the reed is sharp enough for me. And Again, I'll find different spots on the knife, working my way up to find sharper sp spots on it. Well, I'll eventually have to sharpen this knife, but not, not right now. And the very, very, very tip. Now, by doing this, once again, I'm creating the more definition as far as the very, very area in this heart so that there's a nice shadow. 
and everything else I'm leaving alone. I'm not going back into the tip. I mean, the, the, the heart, I'm not digging out of the heart that much. If anything, I'll just make it, the spine look pretty, pretty straight down the line and making sure that it, it looks pretty. Believe it or not, if it looks good, it usually is gonna vibrate pretty good. So, okay, let's see if that alone, how that works. So let's take this knee. So now what we're going to do is I've scraped out of the sides of the tip and the very, very tip, focusing on making sure that, the, that there's a lot of wood in the middle of the tip, which gives me a darkness. And I've done very, very little to the back of the reed. I have a response because we established that at the beginning of this um, lesson. And what I'm going to do now is be concerned about what quality of sound I'm getting. So here I am and I now have a reed who, which I feel is not getting in the way of me being able to do what my heart uh, spontaneously wants to do with this solo Tchaikovsky fourth that I will now play for you in which I will take a breath in the middle of it and make sure that it, it all um, sings and, and I keep the line through the entire solo and even the small phrases that, um, that are there but to never lose sight of the entire phrase. It's a very simple solo. We, should, we, we shouldn't overdo it, just very, play it very simplistic and let's see if the reed doesn't get, gets in the way or doesn't get in the way. As you can see, I I'm always have a lot of air behind the reed. Now, that reed, to me, that time, didn't get in the way of what I wanted to do musically to that. So now I will play it all without any air, without any breath in the middle of it. Okay, as you notice, I didn't take any breath, but I didn't circular breathe. I just I put a lot of air through the oboe. And what that enables me to do is create a smoothness in my playing. Because I can, I can like a hose with a faucet on the top, the top of the hose. If you want to spray your plants without breaking the leaves, then you put it on a spray mode. If you want to put a more powerful, you can, you can turn it into a more powerful airflow going through the hose. The same thing applies to oboe playing, is that I'm, I can, I can uh, manipulate my air through the oboe so that even though I always have a, a lot of back pressure, air, back, air back pressure, that it enables me to be able to utilize my backing off and still there's a lot of air behind that. So nothing will collapse on me. Now, if I take too much out of the reed, of the back, then usually what happens is that the reed will give a give away, give out on me, and it won't it won't um, give me the ability to to niente. So ultimately, today we accomplished getting the reed to sound darker, and at that point, really, there's not much more I feel we can do to a reed. It, the rest of it, I think, is very important that we learn to audibly train our ears to hear what we want to ultimately individually sound like as oboists. I have a particular style in which I want to sound like. Somebody else might want to have a different style. Everybody I, I wants to create their own indelible 
style and audibly, if you train your ears to do that, you'll be less dependent on the read other than the fact that it's responsive and has a nice quality to it. But more importantly, to, for us to all be concentrating on having faith and confidence in our audible abilities to hear what we want to hear and all, it'll all fall into place. Hi, this is my dog Amigo. He's a Chihuahua. Say hi everybody. Hi, say hi Amigo to all you read makers out there. And anyway, I hope you can join on my Facebook, my Oboes Against Readmaking page and also make any comments you would like. I've been inundated with a lot of questions over the last 10 days since I haven't put anything up and I will put up on a more regular basis. I apologize for that. And also please leave any messages if you wish on my YouTube page. Um, so anyway, uh, and if you want me to play anything, if you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them. I'll have some help people answering questions for me too. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend.